All right. For this planet and for this confederacy of the 21 adjacent stars and its 76 planets, uh, the incident two, uh, it is a very long, involved, and complex instance, about 36 days. All right, now if the PC at that moment were, gave an aspect of relief and looked well, he would say, that's good. You understand he has to be an OT3 or this sort of thing wouldn't be happening to him. You don't run this on people below that level, you kill them. So, he says, yes, oh, that's great. Oh, my God, what a relief. Oh. Good. And you say, all oh, right, good, that's fine, thank you very much. And let him take it up himself. Now, he's going to go on the basis that they all blew, and I got news for you on a cluster, they don't always all blow. There are 15 of them left. It looked so spectacular to see such a mass and disintegrate, and so many of them leave. But, there might be some still around. Now, you have to finish running the engram out to that degree and run incident one on each separate one of them. And they go, blood, thump, gone, 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 gone. And it cleans it up. Because the funny part of it is, is let us say, he had a terrible throat. Oh, oh, couldn't talk, see? And then you found this instance, you dated the thing, you got some substance of what it was all about, and all of a sudden you got this, oh, gone, you know? Still going to be left with a bit of a sore throat. You're going to say, well, that's natural. No, it isn't natural. That's the 10 or 15 you've left. <laughs> that's the engram. The engram is still remaining with those two. Do you follow? Now, also, there's a copy. Now, Thetan's copy. What has just been copied? Thetan's copy, what has been copied and make copies of the copies, you get the idea. So you get this kind of a thing. The thing came off your back. See? Came off. Gone. But the mass is still there. All right, who's copying the Thetan who just left? That's the trick. Oh, this one is copying, and then that go, there goes that mass. Cross-copying. And you run into a lot of this cross-copying, and so on, as you try to run this stuff. Got it? But, for the purposes of an assist, the, oh, well, goodbye, Joe, see you later, oh, you know, that's good enough, boy. You don't push your luck. Oh, that's good. Get on it with it someday. Let him recover. Let him get his breath. And then, hit it later. But you'll normally have these characters coming back saying how it didn't all go away. Well, of course it didn't all go away. Not all the cluster left. Now, the engram wasn't erased. There is a basic on the engram. There's a whole chain there that hasn't been gone down. Do you follow? You didn't finish the job. All it was was an assist. You got it? So what happens when this fellow all of a sudden starts spinning and he says, there's an opera singer standing right in front of my face and she's going round and round and round and round and round and I don't understand it and I don't understand it. Oh my God, my God. <gasps> there goes the fever again. You know, what is all this? Same procedure. You're trying it in the roots. Do it to the degree you can. Make a little assessment of what this thing might be. Then you ditch it because it's going to be some sort of an incident. And when you date it, if it comes up with the key dates of incident uh, two, which is, of course, 74 million plus, it's almost 75 million, almost in PT, peculiar to this planet. We came up with about four quadrillion. It's incident one. They are that far apart. And that's peculiar to all the things of the universe. They all got that. So, of course, it makes them tend to cluster. That's why they blow up and go apart and everything works out when you hit incident, so-called incident one. All right. 
If it comes out of the heading of an assist, and you cool it off to a point of where you can lead it, and he can bear it, and that is it. And then he lives to be audited another day. You got it? Those are all assists. Now, it isn't a proper session, because you didn't fly the roots for a major action. You didn't fly the roots for contact assist. You didn't fly the roots for uh, a uh, touch assist. You didn't fly the roots for this assessment. You can, by the way, make, make an assessment after the assessment. You, you can make an assessment for what it is, and then you can make a little assessment and write down asking the PC questions. Well, what's the content of it? I don't know. I don't know. Well, just tell me something. Is it a, an accident? Uh, is it a shock of some sort? Is it a... Uh, and then he's liable to volunteer one or two items, and you sort of put that... It's not a one-item list. It, it'll work out sort of like that. It, because it is usually just one thing. But you're not trying to list and know this thing. You're just asking the question. You're writing it down to compare the reads. Do you follow? And if he runs out of it, you can furnish a couple yourself because he's not... So it violates like hell putting an item on the PC's list. Right? So it isn't really a listing and knowing action. Do you understand? It's just trying to find some information. So it, uh, it is an assist. It isn't really a proper session, but you must in all cases carry on and assist with the discipline of the auditor. Don't force the PC, be persuasive, be gentle, keep your TRs in, do the actions which you can do within the limits of the session. Do you understand that? You're going to run into this character who starts going round and round and round, and they say the helicopter is going to crash, it's going to crash, and you're looking for a helicopter accident. What the hell? It's R6, boy, and nothing else. I don't know. I think for about a day or two it takes this helicopter to crash in R6. <laughs> yeah, there's no helicopter there. The guy's frozen in alcohol and glycol and sitting in a block being given a... A uh, big 3D Cecil B. DeMille special motion picture. Uh, now, the constituency of these, you should understand, incident one is simply incident one. Uh, a person can have himself more than incident one, more than one, incident one. A person himself can have administered some incident ones. There can be an overt incident one. It's a relatively simple implant, but it is uh, quite was quite effective in lousing people up because it interrupted them from creating what they would have created and it took away what mock-ups they did have and it stopped their cycle and it put something there that was unwanted. So when then they tried to create, they created it because it fixed their attention by process, well, by protest. All right, for this planet and. For this confederacy of the 21 adjacent stars and its 76 planets, um, the incident two, uh, it is a very long, involved, and complex incident, about 36 days. It starts out normally with a capture, some kind or another. Uh, capture. And don't think of yourself as uh, trying to run a capture of having been airy ferrying around in the air and somebody something or other and got you down with a net and all that. <laughs> all of that. Because people at that particular time and space were walking around in clothes which looked very remarkably like the clothes they wear at this very minute. And the cars they drove looked exactly the same. And the trains they ran looked the same. And the boats they had looked the same. Circa 19 1950-1960, uh, the civilization has simply copied R6 100% because they were told to. And they walked down streets that looked like these streets and lived in houses that looked like these houses and so on. That's, that's what the hell. And there was quite a bit of huffle luffle and then upset and so on before R6 took place. What it was was the loyal officers uh, were the body, the elective body, they call them the loyal officers. They were there to protect the populations and so forth. And they had elected a fellow by the name of Zemu, uh, could be spelled X-E-M-U, to the supreme ruler. 
and they were about to unelect him, and he took the last moments he had in office to really goof the floof. Yes, I don't blame you for dropping something. And uh, <laughs> he took these last moments to really upset it. He, of course, had several key uh, birds who were close to him. He was a suppressive, banned all suppressives. He got these administrators and so on and heads of planets in various positions and places. He picked out all the cowboys in the white hat and he got rid of them first fast and then troops, not knowing what the hell they were doing, but fed all kinds of false orders, were fed in against the population to pick them up one after the other. One of the mechanisms they used was to tell them to come in for an income tax investigation. <laughs> and uh, the United States just copies income tax. They're just our six are a bunch of dramatizing psychotics. These guys. Uh, so in they went and the troops started slaughtering them and then the troops of course were ordered out to get a hold of certain bodies of renegade troops which were ordered to get certain bodies of bad troops and they shot each other up and implanted each other and wiped it out. They were making billiard balls out of these places. Uh, they were imported they were actually, the trick was to shoot somebody, disable somebody very often, a needle into a lung, and at the same time to hit him with frozen alcohol and glycol, which preparation is guaranteed to pick up a thing. How he had to do was pick him up and put him in a refrigerator, and they had him, boy. He tried to exteriorize from the body, there he was frozen. And, uh, they threw him into collection points boxed them up in boxes, threw them into space planes, which are the exact uh, DC-8s, the D DC-8 airplane is the exact copy of the space plane of that day. And uh, no difference, except the DC-8 had fans, propellers on it, and the space plane didn't. And they threw them into refrigerated units and so on, in view of the fact that Einstein was absolutely right. Uh, no man can't go faster than the speed of sound. What a lot of our speed of light, which is much of all or dash. The length of time from the planet Coltus to the planet Tigiak, which is the name of this planet, was nine weeks, and you'll see that it's many light years. Coltus is one of the planets, and is to this day one of the planets of the North Star. Polaris. And uh, people were ferried in here by the billions and the billions and the billions and they were ferried in here with boxes and they were put in boxes and stacked around and the people who were on this planet already just caught it in the teeth. They weren't bothered. Nobody bothered to pick them up. They just shot their administrators from guns and shot their control points out and they took these people in boxes and so forth and they dumped them and then they set off hydrogen bombs on the top of each primary volcano there is on this particular planet, and when they blew up, it blew the Thetans into the air, and after the bomb, an electronic ribbon, which also was a type of standing wave, was erected over the area. The tremendous winds of the planet blew every Thetan there was straight in to those particular vacuum zones which had been created. These were brought down, packed up, and put in front of... Uh, projection machines, which with sound and color pictures, uh, first gave them the implant which you know as clearing cores. And then a whole track implanted which you know as OT2. After this, however, up about a, the remainder of the 36 days, which is the bulk of them, is taken up with a 3D super colossal motion picture, uh, which has to do with God, the devil, uh, space opera, uh, etc. They go five pictures to five words, and we have the full record of what it is. And uh, it goes on for about 36 days, and then these poor bastards were let wander out. Uh, pardon me. They were then boxed up again, and the boxes were mixed, so that there were two assembly areas. One was Las Palmas, and the other was Hawaii. And in these two assembly areas, they took samples from each volcano area and put it in little boxes. And they had an assembly line, and at Las Palmas, it runs down the main street of Las Palmas. Uh, we had more damned accidents on that main street you shake a stick at. One of our captains was feeling rather queasy until I told her, well, the old assembly line of R6 is just 25 feet from you as you lie here on the slipway. <laughs> that blew the charge. 
Uh, the uh, entirety of Roman Catholicism, uh, the devil, uh, all of this sort of thing, that is all part of our sex. Uh, practically anything you think of, all modern theaters in actual fact are built with the exact symbols shown for them in our sex. Uh, they even have the symbol on the boxes on the side of the theater. They preserve those to this day. It's so you know, indelible. They're not quite right. But they still know that there's supposed to be a design on those boxes at the side of, of the audience to the left and right. And so on. There's supposed to be a certain gold, gilt design over there. And they still put it there. And uh, in the thing, there are about four or five assignments of who did it. There are about four or five different things that might have done it. It's blamed on one of these things this time and another thing that time, and so on, so as to get people very confused as to what was the true cause of the entire thing. After they were packaged up, they were blown off into space and let them go to hell. These planets averaged one seven eight billion human beings per planet. 178 billion. There were 250 billion on this planet. The name of this planet was Tigiak, and this is known as the bomb place, and this is the evil place. This is the place where they all got smashed. You wonder today where you see large areas of where the alleged volcanic action has been. Those are our six explosions, the remains of them. If you go down through many layers of civilizations archaeologically, you come to green glass. Now, to get rid of the whole damn thing, it is only necessary to run Incident 1, really, in most cases, which runs out the whole track because the fellow realizes he's mocking it up, and he knocks it off, and that is that. But Incident 2 has a volcanic explosion, which follows the actual explosion as its picture, and it's very tricked very tricked up, so that you actually bunch of thetans and they get bombed. Uh, that is one. <laughs> that is one of the... It's, it's wild. That is one of the explosions that is shown, and there are several explosions shown in sequence. So actually what happened was, is there's the real explosion, which is the guy's boxed up in a box, or he is walking around, or some of the loyal officers that were caught here and so on were chained on the top of buildings and so on, so when the bomb hit, why, they would be flicked off into the fantastic hundreds of mile an hour, thousands of mile an hour winds of, an, of a com gross, complete atomic explosion all over the planet, and they were whirled in these terrific winds and so on. Everybody on the planet was killed. Uh, and about three days afterwards is actually when the implanters started operating. They had it all rigged to operate. And uh, then, to make a long story short, you can easily get into one of the false explosions. There's the fairy queen, the fairy palace. So it's supposed to be a fairy palace. Dive down to save somebody because there's been an explosion. So that's all phony. So there's false start after false start after false start to the incident. What it's is really designed to do is to make the individual cease and desist from creation and to knock out overpopulation. This is one of the big ideas they had that if they just did all this, then they get rid of all overpopulation. The target of it is the second dynamic. So it is full of second dynamic suppressions. Uh, for instance, you find people who are totally obsessed with sex with children. Well, that is taught in our sex. Uh, they were nice guys. Anyway, to make a long story short, there's even a motion picture studio in it. They even give the writers and so forth of the thing. They, they, they had several tricks that they used. They can make a full figure appear in the room, which looks totally solid and totally 3D to the person. Uh, uh, that's, they, they're just tricks. Just nothing. We know so much more about the mind than the R6 or that there's no comparison. Now, the net result of all of this was to make a 75 million year vacuum as far as this part of the universe is concerned. You wonder why, why don't, if there are saucers around, why don't they land on this planet? 
This planet traditionally, traditionally over the various zones and areas has an evil reputation. Mutineers and deserters and that sort of thing are often dumped on this planet. They often come here in refuge because they know nobody's going to come after them. This planet's the planet of the evil repute, and this sector of the universe has a very evil repute. Now, all the data which you have, that was uh, 74 plus 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 billion years ago, almost 75, and uh, this catastrophe overcame this confederation, and it has made a very unsavory part of the universe, to say the least. Uh, about, well, relatively, almost modern times, they 20 million years ago or something like that, somebody started up a body line on the planet. Uh, it's gradually worked through various areas of barbarism, and once more, uh, R6, Taylor made it to be nothing but a caveman civilization. Uh, and uh, But nevertheless, they, they moved up the line, and they moved up toward the dramatization of R6, and that is what man calls progress. Now, they have managed to make things this way and that way. Their technology is rather pathetic. But uh, they moved up the line until, they, until there is some possibility of establishing communication with regard to the activity. The, the fate of the R6er, you'll have many a PC who will say to you, you know, oh my God, they're after me. You know, well, they... they Sure, fixed up an area. They fixed up an implant that their people are taught carefully that any man who tries to save the world must be killed. He must be mobbed and hanged. Uh, any man who tries to save the world. So I, of course, shifted our valence over to uh, a more optimum R6 valence. The whole population of the planet responds like a clock to R6 symbols. They respond to nothing else. They do not respond to reason, they only respond to R6 symbols. So you occupy the wrong symbol, and people begin to think of you as a person who is going to save the planet, then one and all are more or less under orders to slaughter you. Well, they booby-trapped it. They booby-trapped it very badly. The Roman Catholic Church, somewhere along the line, through watching the dramatizations of people, picked up some little fragments of R6. And they make it look like it's continued forward into present time. But the truth of the matter is that the loyal officers were not all killed. Zemu missed. And uh, they were not all killed, not by a long way. Although the civilization was battered, it still had weapons, it still had transport, it still had some semblance of organization, and the loyal officers who were at remote bases, who were airborne at the time, who somehow or another on other planets were not affected, suddenly turned around right after this great catastrophe, and the administrators and renegades which Zemu had brought in were not very effective, and a firefight ensued which put the finishing touches on the Galactic Confederation. These, the towns that were left and so on were just battered into ruins where you had the renegades and, that had been hired and so on and the administrators that had been loyal to Zemu were still trying to hold out. Within a year, he was in, in, uh, under arrest and uh, within six years, uh, the lot had been wiped out the loyal officer was triumphant. Zemu was put with several of his cohorts in the center of a mountain, which is still on one of these planets, and uh, in a wire cage, which is charged with an eternal battery. He's not likely ever to get out. And uh, the loyal officers looked around. There wasn't anything left. And, of course, nobody could manufacture this or that or the other thing. And what people there were left, they couldn't obtain any supplies, and they couldn't maintain the civilization, and what little was left that wasn't battered to pieces simply went by the boards and vanished from history. There is a base on this planet, and it is so shredded away as to be hardly recognizable. Wherever, then, uh, anybody tries to do anything about this, He's apt to get uh, a flashback. So you mustn't go around talking about being the people who are going to save the planet. 
You are the people the planet obeys. You are the people who own the planet. You are not the people who are going to save the planet. And thereby you will save it. <laughs>